Hey humans, how you all doing? It's me, your friendly secular humanist minister, George 3 here, and we're going to be watching some Greek mythology sleep stories. I hope you have enough time to pay attention. This video is about three hours long, and don't worry, we're not going to watch the entire thing. This will just be a uh, little short preview, as short as I want it to be anyway. You might actually find it interesting. about the myth of creation. Ooh, the myth of creation. At first, before the world existed, there was nothing, only a primary void, a nothingness, chaos. Out of the void, after an undefined period of time, because time itself didn't exist yet, primary divine beings emerged. Ooh, I wonder they what kind of divine beings. beings. As they were essential principles, dimensions of this new world in creation. The Earth, Gaia. The Abyss, Tartarus. The Darkness, Erebus. The darkness. And Love, Eros. Without male Depending on which person. Gaia gave birth to the sky, Uranus, who then fertilized her. From the union of Earth oh, and Oh, fertilize, I get it. Twelve wink, beings wink. were born. Mother the goddess Gaia. Six male and six female. After the birth of the twelfth and last of the titans, Cronus, Gaia Cronus. and Uranus decided no more titans were to be born. No more titans. But their union kept producing creatures, the giant cyclops with a single eye, or the monstrous hundred-handed ones, other giants with fifty heads and a hundred hands. Oh, fifty-headed giant, nice. So I was grabbing my Pikachu. They were all thrown into a Tartarus. The Abyss by Uranus, who disowned his monstrous offspring. This made Gaia. I'm just pausing the video right here because I'm holding Gaia right now. I'm holding Gaia right here. <laughs> Furious. She convinced her latest born, Titan Cronus, to castrate his father. Yeah. He did this. And he became the ruler of the Titans. With his sister and wife, female Titan Rhea, he ruled over the other the Titans. The ancient Greeks have a lot of incest going on. The court around them. Cronus' power was undisputed. But he couldn't find peace because he had betrayed his father. And he feared that his offspring would do the same. So that tends to happen a lot of those type of stories. He snatched up the children and ate them. Sounds like and a reasonable response. Children, including Poseidon. Could it not fuck his wife Hera so much that she keeps getting pregnant? Were eaten this way. But Rhea hated this. And she tricked her husband when another son, Zeus, was born. She wrapped Zeus. a stone in a baby's blanket, and Cronus ate the stone instead of his son. I'm going to pause that here. Years passed. He ate a stone, thinking it's his son. How the hell do you confuse a stone with a kid? Some versions say that uh, the stone was transformed to look like a, the appearance of a baby. Other versions say that it was just a regular stone that they found, that they just rubbed a blanket around. Wrap the blanket around. I'd check first before swallowing just to make sure. Because, you know, he knows that his wife is resentful for him eating her children that she produced with him. But, hey. Hidden from his father, Zeus became an adult and resolved to seek revenge against his murderer. Revenge! Father. One day, 
Zeus poisoned Cronus' drink, which caused Titan to vomit. Cronus threw up all his children and the stone, which had been sitting in his stomach in the Stone of Age for all these years. Zeus, just sitting in his stomach, by his lack. brothers and sisters, doesn't even realize. Challenged Cronus and the Titans to war for the kingship of the gods. The and gods. At last, with the help of the Cyclops that they had freed from Tartarus, the children were victorious. They were victorious. Cronus and the Titans were imprisoned in Tartarus. Hello, Ice Wizard, I think it is. Time, the order of things had been turned upside down by your son betraying his father and it's Zeus, like the world went from this who now this. ruled the world with the other gods around him had the same concern a prophecy said that his firstborn would be a god greater than he so when his first wife Metis a descendant of the first titans became pregnant he swallowed her. That this yep. didn't stop their child from all. being born. Goddess, I don't know how you do that. Burst but... forth from Zeus' head, already fully grown and dressed for war. Yeah, with armor. Like, can she take the, the armor off? Like what? Among gods, and their circle expanded. Aphrodite, Ares, Apollo, and many more were born. Ah, Aphrodite is the goddess of love. Sometimes born of uh, sea folk combined with uh, Cronus' semen. The gods lived on Mount Olympus under the eye of Zeus. And with this new order, the first age, the age of gods, came to first an age. end. Well, I guess that's the end. <laughs> then began the age of gods and mortals. The world had been populated yes, mortals. with Woo, weak humans. creatures. That had a ridiculously short humans. lifespan. Humans. Gods mingled freely with them, falling in love with humans and uh, producing uh, demigods or heroes. They also That's true, they like to do that. Or educated them. Demeter gave them agriculture. Hestia looked after their earth. Some of the gods' secrets were also revealed to mankind, such as fire, stolen fire, by thanks Prometheus, to Prometheus, the son of the Titans, Titan. and given to men. As time passed, the gods became less interested in interfering in human affairs. They withdrew to Mount Olympus and would now only intervene punctually. How do I look now? Do I look younger? <laughs> depending on their interest in uh, mortals or just on their whims. And this Probably is both. how the age of gods and mortals came to an end. A new age began. The heroic age. The heroic age. Heroes, sons of gods and mortals, Heroes. accomplished extraordinary feats. That would stay in memories for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with the help of gods or against their will. In this new heroic age, Perseus, Theseus, Bellerophon, Heracles, Jason, ah, Hector, Heracles, Achilles, Ajax, Hercules, or Hercules, Odysseus, Hercules. explored, conquered, fought and sometimes met their tragic fate. So, tonight... Uh, Greek tragedy is called that for to spend our time together in the company of gods, heroes, and mortals, and relive episodes of the grand fresco that this heroic age of Greek mythology is. I love Greek mythology. There is going to be dozens of stories that are part of bigger epic tales. Yes, that's true. The labors of Heracles, the Iliad and the Trojan War, 
Ah, the Trojan War. In between the stories, I'll tell you about the origins of Greek mythology, its functions in Greek society, how Greek and later Roman literature Why is started his the tradition down there? of storytelling and the archetypes of stories hey, that are still very no much no with us today. There is a lot to Ooh, say, this? but we're going to take things in order. And I like those know, little books he has. You can navigate the story using the timestamps in the first command if you fall asleep and wish to return at another time. Oh, well, if I no fall asleep, I'm going to be late for work. Because I will not get back up for Just at least six hours. Let me do the work. So, adopt a comfortable position. And feel free to close your eyes anytime. Close my eyes anytime, okay. need the sound of my voice to guide you. What? I, I can't hear my eyes closed. I'm going to tell you are already available on streaming platforms like Spotify or Apple Music, if that suits you better. There is a link. My podcast is actually a part of a, a, not a part, but it's on Spotify too. I want a podcast called Ask an Atheist Weblin. You should check it out. The link will be in the description box below. In the first comment. And you can also listen to them on Patreon as a podcast. I also have a Patreon. A patron, Patreon.com slash G-O-G-G-3. You can also download audio. The link will be in the description videos, box below. Including this one to have them offline. And access new posts, updates, and surveys every week. So, first I like this guy's we'll voice. The story of Heracles, condemned to accomplish extraordinary Subscribe. labors across Greece and beyond, to redeem his sin. Then we will relieve the Trojan War, which account is based on the Iliad and multiple other tales that were added later. And after the Trojan War, we will follow the incredible journey home of King Odysseus, one of the Greek I can see myself falling asleep for this. War, as told in the Odyssey. At some point in time, I will be doing a, uh, a watch of... Um, it's, it's one of his videos, but instead of Greek mythology, it's Norse mythology. And I've, I've actually listened to that as well, but I've actually fallen asleep to it as well. I, I usually tend not to uh, fall asleep uh, when it comes to certain things, because I'll just get too invested in the stories. It's to a point where I'll be like, oh god, I have to know what happens to this. I can't fall asleep now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's... I really enjoy the uh, tales that he does with uh, Loki. So, let's begin. Part two. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Part one, the 12 labors of Hercules. Once upon a time, Zeus, the king of gods, had an affair with a mortal woman. Yes, he did. He was you. Okay, I did not know that the 12 labors of Hercules is going to be about an hour long. Well, more than that, but... Let's listen to as much of it as we can. He was to it, and he had fathered various children with mortals. Oh, he fucked a lot of Perseus, mortals. The grandfather. Like a lot of people. Uh, in Greek uh, mythology, Zeus uh, consensually had sex with, and non consensually had sex with a lot of people. And he turned himself into animals just to do the deed. That's how us. Uh, Minotaurs, centaurs, and stuff like that exist in Greek mythology, not in real life. <laughs> Although, if they do exist in real life, and you are a minotaur or a centaur or something like that, and you're out there watching this, props to you. Keep up the good work. Father of the young beauty, he now fancied. Alcmene, that was her name, had a face and eyes that were as charming 
and as irresistible as Aphrodite is. As charming and irresistible as Aphrodite is? Interesting. That's a very interesting claim, because she's supposed to be the most beautiful of the gods of all of existence, and anybody who even challenges her usually ends up with a very bad fate. Like, my eyes, are they perfect and beautiful as Aphrodite's? Let me know in the chat and in the uh, comment section. Uh, and tell me what you think. I don't think so. I think, okay, Aphrodite's is like a 10, and I'm like at a 6.5. Why would I wet myself so high? Fuck you. That's why. The goddess of love and beauty. Her wisdom was surpassed by no one. And it was said that she could please men like no woman before her. Alcmini was married to Amphitryon. One day, her husband went to war, and Zeus took the opportunity to trick her into sleeping with him. When you have to trick Using somebody into sleeping with you, you're a piece of shit. He her that he was Amphitryon, Just saying. early from an expedition. And Just saying, because that's ridiculous. Her making her pregnant. Yep, he got a lot of people pregnant. On the same night, a lot. her real husband returned. He got so many people pregnant, it's like ridiculous. It's in the, like the thousands, the hundreds of thousands, pretty much, in Greek and Roman mythology. Now granted, a lot of the gods uh, sired a lot of kids, many of whom did so by immoral, immoral means, but... Uh, you know what? Let's just continue listening. And Alcmini understood she had been tricked. But they also slept together, and she became pregnant again, now bearing twins from two different fathers. Two different but fathers, Zeus oh shit. had a wife too, Vodas Hera. His sister. And when she found out what her divine husband had done, Again, she entered in a jealous rage and swore to get revenge from the soon-to-be-born child of her husband. Hera is a bitch Zeus was and a, a priester in Greek mythology. And so I'm just saying. She. The king of gods knew that Alcmini was about to give birth. So Hera persuaded him to swear an oath that the next male to be born in the house of Perseus would become High King. High King. Thinking he would grant the title <coughs> to his own son, Zeus was happy to oblige. But as soon as he swore the oath, Hera went on with her plan. She knew that another son was to be born soon. In the house if you're wondering, that was just uh, water Ulysses. inside an Arizona green tea uh, can. She hurried to Alcmini's dwelling and slowed the birth of her twins by forcing the goddess of childbirth to sit cross-legged with her clothing tied in knots near the soon-to-be mother. This caused the twins to stay trapped in the womb. And then she Four caused twins? Eurystheus to be born prematurely making him the High King in place of Zeus' son. Uh -oh. She, too, could fool her adulterous husband, whose son would have no title. Alcmini no title, would finally huh? have her twins. My title is the very student, Dr. Reverend George Hawkins. Named Alcides, and the son of Amphitryon, Hyphicles. For fear of Hera's revenge, Alcmini exposed the infant, but he was taken up by goddess Athena, who Athena. often protected heroes, the sons of gods with mortals. Athena brought him to Hera, who didn't recognize the child, and who also had a motherly instinct. Out of pity for the abandoned child, she nursed Poor him, kid. but the baby had so much vigor and 
circled so strongly on her breast that he caused her pain. She pushed him away, and her milk sprayed across the heavens, forming the Milky Way. That's why it's called the Milky Way, really? The back to his real mother, and he was raised by his mortal parents. Alcides was a strong and brave little boy, but his parents knew that Hera had not been appeased and was still after him. She once sent two snakes to the twins' bedroom to bite Alcides, but the boy pulled them without fear. This is reminding me of uh, the Hercules anima animated movie parents from Disney. Playing with them. In an attempt to protect him from the goddess wrath, they renamed him Heracles, Heracles. glory of Hera, in the hope that this would appease her anger. It didn't. It didn't. It, it appeased it by like and this after much. Sending various ordeals his way, she plotted her big revenge. Heracles had reached adulthood. And in the city of Thebes, he had married the king's daughter, Megara, and had ah, three children his with foil. her. The one who kills him. His but it's okay, he becomes a god later. Love for his family were unbearable to Hera. She inspired a fit of madness in Heracles. I in believe. his uncontrollable rage. He killed his entire family, his uh, wife, and his children. Okay, this is a different Meg then. Devastated by what he had done, Heracles fled to the oracle of Delphi, the ancient sanctuary where resided Pythia, the priestess of Apollo, the oracle who could see the threads of the future and guide important decisions. Hero was still unsatisfied, and in a new blow, she inspired the oracle so that it would direct Heracles to serve Eurystheus, the High King. Eurystheus. The same Eurystheus who owed his title to Hero's actions when she had accelerated his birth. Heracles was said that his sin would be redeemed if he served Eurystheus for ten years and accomplished any task he would be instructed to perform. Heracles accepted any task? and went yeah. to Eurystheus, and he started a series of extraordinary accomplishments that would cement his legend, the Twelve Labors. King Eurystheus accepted to give him a... various feats. I'm sorry, I gotta pause that there. Because that gemstone that he has right there is beautiful. I don't know where he's getting all this stuff, but I want it. <laughs> I want a replica similar to him. Uh, yeah, it's worth a lion too. Because the lion's pretty cool. You don't want to fuck with a lion, right? also called Labors. And the first one was to slay the Nemean lion. In the northeastern part of the Peloponnese was a town called Nemea. Nemea. That lived in terror of a monstrous lion. A creature that Oh, this is the lion that uh, Hercules weapons, fights. Because it was protected by a magical golden fur. Its claws were sharper than the sharpest sword, and they could cut through any armor. I would have fucked with that for the hoped he could kill it Fuck. at a distance with arrows, because he didn't know about its impenetrable fur. Got a crack back. He found the lion and shot several arrows at it. He understood this wouldn't work as deer. 
Uh, I guess the superhero Hawkeye from uh, the Avengers can't help. Heracles he's all about the arrows. And Green Arrow. Unless he's the Spectre, night, then that's a different story. The lion lived in a cave with two entrances. Heracles blocked one so that the creature. I thought I had a, like a little lion prop, but I don't. I have this he pig lady, though. With a hook club that he used to stun the beast. And then he strangled Ooh. it with his bare hands, Damn. making the magical golden fur useless. After slaying the lion, he tried to skin the it. The fur will stop bullets and knives, but it won't fucking stop a good strangle. Could pierce the fur. Or well, next time. After sharpening the knife with a stone, Goddess Athena. Was watching him. I know he wears it as a pelt. And she inspired him to use one of the claws because they were the sharpest weapons in the world. And it worked. Shit, I would use those Heracles claws. He turned the fur into a coat that he wore from this moment on. A coat that was impervious to the elements and most weapons and would protect him for the rest of his adventures. And one that eventually kills him. He returned to Eurythias, carrying the carcass of the lion on his shoulders, to the surprise and terror of the king. Eurythias told him that from now on, his labors would be increasingly difficult. Heracles was often depicted in the antiquity and after with this fur cape and his club. This is the Nemean lion's skin. In this first labor, he shows the kind of courage, physical strength and intelligence that are typical of Greek heroes. Typical, of but course. But what is a hero, actually? What is a hero? Because this is a word that is used a lot, and its meaning has evolved along history. Nowadays, a definition of a hero could be a person who is admired for extraordinary acts of bravery or fine qualities. It can be a real person, dead or alive, or even a fictional character. That's true. And Spider Man. So fictional Superman. That sometimes the hero Batman. of a story. Is Cactus Man. The main protagonist, regardless of his or her capabilities and actions. In Greek antiquity, the meaning of hero was more restrictive. Heroes were warriors with an exemplary life living and often dying in the pursuit of honor. They were commonly extraordinarily gifted and had divine blood. So heroes were mythical rather than real characters. They belonged in mythology and literature. And even That's a very true. brave, real Greek warrior would never have been called a hero. So, among the various characters, the various persons, real or fictional, that we may call heroes nowadays, the modern sense of heroes as fictional characters, like superheroes, or the main protagonists... Anyone can be a hero, basically, is what he's saying. ...is actually the closest to the ancient meaning of the word for the Greeks. And another characteristic of my back ancient again. Greek heroes was that I'm they sitting were on an old chair. Float. I don't know if you can see it. They could uh, behave. I have my uh, foldable chair over here, but I don't feel like sitting like on it right children. now. They could be too naive. The link for it will be in the description box below. Foolhardy. They could uh, embark on expeditions or ruin people's lives for. Yeah, that's true. Reasons. They could ruin people's lives. But generally, contrary to God's Ooh, what's that in ancient hand? literature, heroes evolved. 
they didn't stand for a, a fixed concept or an aspect of the world like gods did. Greek gods, as in many other pantheons, represented or dominated something. War, thunder, the seas, the skies, love, death. They are depicted in ancient Greek literature with human-like characteristics in the sense that they have feelings, they have passions, they fight between them. That is a they beautiful a gemstone right there. But they never change. Heroes are much closer to... I'm pausing the video right now because I just want to say I want to get this type of a set so I can... Uh, I have some video ideas I want to do. I have also prop ideas I need to get. And if you guys follow me on Patreon, the link will be in the description box below. I'll be able to get uh, several things for uh, future videos. But that's not important right now. Humans. And they have a narrative associated to their existence. They always go Ooh. on a journey. That's the same color as the uh, big the one right there. And themselves. They learn. I'm a fan of pretty rocks. Dilemmas. And they build Just don't lie and say you can heal you from all diseases. Them. The uh, archetypal hero, apart from uh, Heracles, is uh, Hercules, who fought in the Trojan War on the side Trojan of War. the uh, attackers, the Greeks. He is the central character of the Iliad, the tale by uh, Greek poet Homer, of the fight between the Trojans Not Homer Simpson. and the armies led by uh, King Agamemnon. Hercules had superhuman strength on the battlefield. Yes, he, he was protected by some of the gods, especially Athena. But he was uh, also uh, whimsical, able to uh, lose his humanity and become uselessly uh, cruel. For example, he withdrew from the war I want to hear this. and came back only to avenge his friend and lover killed by Hector, another hero and Trojan prince who fought on the other side. Achilles killed Hector and dragged his body around the walls of the city to humiliate wow. an enemy that was already dead. That's fucked he up, I for his I mean, I understand he got mad at all, but come on. That made him act unwisely. And he was clearly depicted as... A come on, Hercules, you can do better than that. You're supposed to be a god. A, a, the main hero then again, that's a bad example. All the Greek gods are fucking gods awful, except the Hades. Temples. Just saying. And we know their lives and mythical accomplishments through literature, which... I just gotta point out that most of the Greek gods, pieces of shit. Are they more fucked up than Yahweh from the Bible? Uh, I say they're about equal. The only uh, Greek god I would say is not really a piece of shit is Hades. I just covered up my Twitch logo. Sorry. Let me just move that. There we go. Is Hades. <gasps> You rarely ever see any stories uh, that depict Hades in a negative light. It's usually somebody else. But uh, most of the time, uh, he's a good guy, more or less. He's honorable, doesn't lie, doesn't cheat. Uh, any deal he makes, he's honorable with it. Like I said, he's honorable. Uh, and he's really caring about his wife. Granted, he kind of technically kidnapped her after... Uh, uh, asking her father's approval, whose father is also Zeus, uh, for marriage and everything, kind of tricked her into eating some seeds that made it so that uh, she has to live in the other underworld for about uh, three, four, three thirds of the year or something like that. Like, like six months or some shit like that. I can't remember. But um, the uh, seeds, uh, as soon as she ate it, six months, she has to stay down there. That's one reason why we, uh, is an explanation for why we have winter and snow and shit. Developed multi. But Hades, pretty cool guy, otherwise. Faceted characters and told stories 
like compared to all the Greek gods. Before, at least in a written form that we can if you can think of a Greek god is, that isn't a piece of shit, heroes let me know in the comment section. And they can die. They are relatable. They can be role models. And they can serve to tell cautionary tales. Mm -hmm. This makes them a bridge between mythology, religion, and literature. That's true. Their stories. I really like those gemstones he has right there. They were edifying. I don't know why he's brushing the gemstones, but maybe after the Greco-Roman antiquity, when these characters receded in popular culture and disappeared in religion, their cult disappeared. The saints replaced them culturally. Be it in the Christian or Muslim traditions, there are saints whose lives are exemplary. But not True. exemplary because they were born perfect, rather because they went on a heroic journey of a spiritual nature. They accomplished great things, miracles. That's true. They are not heroes in the classical sense of the term, but maybe they played the same role in uh, popular culture as a replacement. They helped inspire of people and helped out people. Heroic That's what matters. That were very famous in the antiquity. In ancient Greece and later in Rome, heroes were a big part of popular culture. They were absolutely not obscure characters, only known by a minority. That's true. But we have many more things to discover about mythology and antique culture. So for now, let's return to Heracles and his second labor. And for that, we will end the stream. And I'm going to end the uh, broadcast soon. Uh, it was a great video. We're going to be continuing this uh, sometime in the near future, probably uh, when I get done work, because I got work in a little bit. So, thank you for watching. If you're not following me on uh, Twitch, you should follow me. Uh, Twitch.tv slash G-E-O-L-G underscore three. And if you're uh, watching us on YouTube, or you're on Twitch and you want to follow me on YouTube, subscribe. My YouTube name's right here. Uh, G-E-O-L-G three. I'm George Sweet. Your friendly secular humanist minister here to uh, have fun with, you know? Hope you guys have a great day. Subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, share your thoughts. Bye, everyone.